morning. Hello. Sorry I haven't done a video for ages. But anyway, here we are. Um, I was going to show you, I was thinking about making um, bottle forms out of out of slabs. And uh, I, I was thinking like these cute little, just cute little sort of, I just made this one a second ago. Cute little bottle forms. I haven't put the base on it yet. But they're so, so simple. And I was thinking that they could be really, really cute. You know, you can make lots of different shapes and stuff and, and have them like in a row. Sorry, I'm, I'm distracted by my hair. It looks really bad today. Anyway, never mind. Um, yeah, so bottle forms out of slabs. Um, I was just thinking about different shapes, different bottle shapes, and you could you could have a little think about different bottle shapes and what they are like. And if when I show you how to do it, then you'll you'll kind of get it a little bit more about what, what sort of shapes might work and what might not. I'm just going to stick with a pretty simple um, shape today uh, and just show you the technique. I can just actually put that on there. I love it though. I really love it. Um, okay, so we've got a rolled out slab of clay. This slab um, is sort of, it's quite... It's quite firm. I've got another slab there. You can't see. It's a bit too floppy, I think. So you've got to roll it out and leave it a bit. Um, it's kind of, it definitely sort of, I can bend it. But if I do bend it, it will hold its uh, shape a little bit. That will really help you make a successful bottle shape. So um, I just think that the easiest way to mark on a bit of clay is just to use your fingertip. You can just literally, I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you can't see that, can you? Oh no, if I hold it up. If you just make a mark with your fingertip, can you see how, how it kind of burnishes the clay a little bit and it doesn't press in or damage the surface of the clay or anything like that. So you can just use your fingertip. You know, I love doing that because it just, if you, if you don't like it, you can just start again. It doesn't matter. You haven't made a mark on the clay or at least not a dent, you know. So I'm going to just um, just do a little bottle shape. Where should I do it? It doesn't really matter. Uh, so I'm just going to do a really simple bottle shape. And I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to be worried about, um, can you see that? There you go. <laughs> I'm not, I'm so not, actually I'm not sure I like that one because it's got quite square shoulders, but we'll give it a go. Um, I might change it a bit actually. <laughs> actually, I'm going to change it a little bit. I quite like the slopey shoulders, so I'm going to just adapt. Um, okay, so let's just go slopey, slopey. I'm just going to cut my bottle shape out. Oops, better do the top bit as well. Okay, so let's have a look. So I've got my bottle shape, okay? And I'm just gonna use that as a template. Okay, so pop that back down on your clay and let's see if I can cut really nice and accurately around the edge. Okay, all the way around the edge, all the way down this side, keeping my cuts nice and clean with a nice clean knife blade. That really helps. Okay, so I've got my two bottle shapes now. Let me just move that out of the way, you know. Okay, so they're stacked up on top of each other. So I'm gonna lift the top one and I'm gonna turn it over so that they're mirror images, okay? So we've got that, because they're not symmetrical. Um, so you need to definitely turn one over so that you get it right. Um, the next thing we need to do is we need to chamfer off these edges. Um, so you're going to take your knife. I hope this works with kitchen knives. I'm using a potter's knife. If you've got a little pointy, a sharper, pointier knife, it might be a little bit easier. And I, I always find it easier if you draw the knife towards you instead of trying to, put, you know, push it away from you. That's going to be really hard. Um, so figure out a way that you can comfortably pull the knife towards you. That, that is a hot tip of the day. So I'm going to start at the top. Let me just show you. What I'm actually doing is I want to get a sort of angle over the sides, down the sides. So I'm holding it really steadily and I'm just taking that bit off. Let me just show you the difference. Can you see? Angled side not cut side. Okay, so you're just taking off that 
little corner, if you like. So I'm actually going to turn that around. It's, I think it's easier doing it this way. So I'm just chopping down the side. And I'm holding it so I'm making sure it's not skidding around on the table. Oh, it's like my bottleneck's going to be very thin. I may have to adapt to that. Okay, can you see? So both sides have got an angle now. That's the one I haven't cut. That's the one I have cut. Okay, popping that one down. And don't forget that you've turned that one over, okay? And you're gonna do the same to that one. So you're gonna cut all the way around the sides. Um, oops, that one went a bit wonky at the end. I mean, they don't have to be as with all my videos, and I'm not looking for kind of some kind of perfect machined, engineered finish at all. Okay, so I've got two, I've got my two edges. Oops, let's show you. With the, with the edges kind of cut at an angle and they mirror each other, okay? So we're gonna join them together, okay? Uh, so with every, uh, you know, joint with ceramics you need to score and sit. I'm just a bit white. What I'm gonna actually do with the tops, um, because they're a little bit thick around the neck, you can see that bit there's a bit thick. I'm actually just gonna squish that. I'm gonna squish the whole neck a little bit and widen it and thin it. Because you'll see when I join it, um, that will be better because otherwise it will close up the hole in the neck. It'll make it a little bit uneven, but we can um, we can sort that out later. So I've just kind of thinned those neck edges a little bit, so they're a tiny bit thinner. Right, let's get the scoring done. Okay, so you're just going to slash your way around down the sides because every time you join two bits of clay together, really, this is the way to do it. So hefty scoring, okay? Really hacking in. Uh, you can cross hatch it if you want. Sometimes I go both ways and cross hatch it like that. That's a really good way of doing it. Um, so let's go down this side. Um, so what you're doing is you're kind of keying up the surface to, um, if you do it like this, it's like welding the two surfaces together. Okay, which is what you want. It's just started to rain. My God, I tell you, my garden, it seriously, seriously needs the rain. It's so dry out there. Okay, so, oh, I've got hair in my mouth. Um, so there we are, both bits scored all the way down the edges. Okay, yeah, like that. Easy peasy. So in order to get like a little bit of a curve, yeah, in our slab, uh, we need to just kind of stretch the clay a little bit. So the way that I'm going to do this, and because these just fit nicely in the palm of my hand, it makes it really easy. Um, if you did a bigger one and maybe you could do it, you just have to kind of do it maybe on a bit, of, you know, on a bit of foam or like the sofa cushion. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of thing. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm just pressing that into my hand. Can you see? I'm just pressing. And because my hand's a nice curved shape, it's accepting that pressure and it's just sort of curving that piece of clay. Can you see? Yeah. And I'm actually going to do it this way a little bit as well. Okay. I don't want to... Oh, it's quite satisfying, you know. That is... That is satisfaction right there, okay? And because my clay isn't too soft, it's just kind of staying there. And I just want to um, just see if I can kind of, I might use a paintbrush handle for this bit, just see if I can kind of get that neck area a little bit pressed in as well, okay? I'm not so worried about that. I more want to get the shape in the body. Okay, and what you'll notice is the chamfered edges, yeah, almost, they're almost kind of flat 
now. Can you see if I turn it to the side? So they've gone from being an angle to coming flat. Yeah? So it means they're going to fit together really well. So let's do the other one. Okay, there we go. Just pressing the clay in. Press, press, press. And I can feel it stretching out into my hand. Yeah? Which is, you know, deep satisfaction. <laughs> I, see, I, I really do need to get out more. I mean, this lockdown, I tell you, I need more than a trip to the supermarket. I can't wait for the pub to open. Seriously. Ham tree in Holt. We love you. I, I can't wait to come and have a pint. God, and it's only like half ten in the morning. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so we're going to blob a little bit of slip on the edges on the edges of there. Okay. So we've got our two curved forms. We've blobbed some slip around the edges. And basically what you're gonna do, they should fit together. I'm just gonna kind of tack them together just at the crucial points, like just up on the shoulder and at the base and then like in the middle. I'm just, because I don't wanna put too much pressure on yet in case it squidges out of shape or or it doesn't quite fit, you know, I just want to be a bit careful, but I'm just tacking it together like that. Let's just stand it up. And here we go around, oops, hello, around the shoulders, like that. And then I'm just going to squeeze the neck together as well. So you can see that we've already got a nice sort of bottle form. And then it's just a case of refining those edges. I'm just squeezing them together now properly and running my hand oh that's satisfying down the sides and i'm just gonna make sure that those are actually properly properly joined now okay okay that's good that is good and this side just getting that right and i actually want to give it a bit more of a belly at the bottom so i'm squeezing it together at the bottom, like you know kind of just squidging it together and I'm going to do that a little bit all the way up and that will just give a little bit more internal volume let me just show you okay you see that's so satisfying and you can tidy up these little seams and you can kind of wait till it's a little bit drier and, and tidy up the top bit and carve it out a little bit but I just wanted to say basically that you're then going to just add your base on um, so you're going to just cut around your form on a scrap bit of clay around the bottom. I feel like I want to make loads of these. I'm dead excited about them. I think they're so cute. I think they could look really nice like in a little row. Terribly tasteful. Okay, so you're going to score and slip. Score. And so you're just going to join the base on to the top bit. And you could decorate them. You could be really cute with them, couldn't you? Oh, I know what else you could do. You could texturize them as well. You could put some really cool, nice texture on. Look, do you like my lovely mug that I made the other day? Mm. This is my new, my little beakers that I've been doing using um, foraged, foraged grasses and stuff from my walks. <laughs> I love it. Right. Okay, so we're just going to blob a bit of slip on the base. And oh, which way round did it go? Uh, I think that way. Yeah, that fits. So I'm just pressing that down onto the base. And just giving it a bit of downward pressure. Um, you, you know, the only reason that these are kind of really doable is because the clay is not too floppy and soft. So a little bit of a press down. Let's wiggle it around. I want to get a good bit of pressure. I'm just wiggling it around a little bit on its base. And that's it. Basically, that is the basic technique. The rest of it is just tidying up the edges. See you later. Bye.